Okay, so part two. It has probably been maybe like 15 or 20 minutes um, past. Um, I've been kind of just fiddling around with the tail as I go, just kind of pushing in the bigger shapes with the large paddle. Um, and pretty soon here I'm going to go in with the detailer and start to sculpt in a little bit more of the finer details. Um, so you can kind of see here, so it's basically, oop, oh, just a second, let me just move this up here. Ooh, oh, there we go. Okay, you can kind of see from this angle just how wide it is from the top and the bottom. So I'm starting to sculpt in those. And you can see here, I try where this area flips over. Um, I tried to make it a deep enough groove to really show the depth in here, um, but at the same time not make me super angry when I'm trying to paint it later because I tend to do that to myself and then I'm like in a murderous rage trying to get into all the nooks and crannies and paint this. Um, so it's got the illusion of depth without having like really hard pockets I can't get into. Um, so I'm just going to keep shaping this a little bit. I'll move this back down maybe. Oh. Forgive my rambling. Okay. At this point, you can kind of see where I'm playing with like larger um, undercuts to give a little bit more depth um, in here. It also kind of gives that the you know layered look of different levels of the tail. starts to get too messy then I'll just go in with my rubbing alcohol and smoothen that out a little bit. It doesn't have to be really perfect at this point because there's still quite a bit more detailing before I have to worry about it not looking like a hot mess. So when I'm working in the finer details, I start using this, this smaller little tiny, ee, little tiny spoon, um, just to get some more basic shapes, little areas that I want, maybe twisting, stuff like that, or like a larger wave, um, which basically I just kind of do like a squiggle like that. And then I'll go back in and detail it a little bit more. Um, but you just kind of squiggle it back and forth. You can see here, I'm kind of getting that little bit of a twisty look like I said at this point you don't have to worry about sculpting extremely cleanly I just make sure I keep it moist so that if I am pulling on it it doesn't drag the epoxy because it'll actually make little pits in it that are more and more difficult to smooth out as it cures so just make sure that your tools wet My 
still in the frame. Okay. Just gotta make sure I have the tendency to disappear off of the screen. You can see here where I've stopped sculpting on the other side. I basically, I usually try and do it right in the middle um, as these, you know, towards the base of the tail is where the shorter bits are. Um, so they tend to part off the side and then the longest part is actually like towards the end of the tailbone where it kind of flows out like that. Um, now her tail is really overgrown and long, so, um, but I just try and keep that center line in mind. Um, now with the top part twisting, this up here will be, this up here will probably change. If anything, I'll probably dremel this down um, to the shape I want and then go back over it and re-sculpt some bits. So it's a little bit of a multi-part process getting the look that you're wanting to achieve. Uh, let's work up here towards the end. I can see this one is going to be a longer kind of flippy tendril bit that kind of covers over these two. So I'm just kind of work that in. You can use the other side of it to kind of loop, use it as a little scoopy to get some extra epoxy out of there. You can also, um, I tend to use the brushes as well for sculpting, um, just light pressure, light to medium pressure. You can get you know, different shapes and smoothness that you want. And once I get the, once I'm getting to the more finer detailed parts, I'll actually use a smaller brush than this. Um, I tend to use the really soft brushes just so that they don't push down too hard on the epoxy because sometimes um, if I'm using a harder brush, it can, it, it'll wind up changing the shape or pushing it somewhere I don't want it to go. So I tend to use the really soft brushes and then if I need to, I can just put more pressure on it rather than using a stiff brush. But, you know, use whatever works for you. Just play around with different tools. All right. I really hope you can hear me well enough in these two. Now certain parts of the middle here are getting a little mushy just from, you know, repeated working on, working the area. Um, so I'll leave that area alone for a little bit. Um, let the epoxy kind of reset a little bit more and then I'll go back in with a detailer.
So after this um, brushing, I'm probably just gonna set it aside again for probably maybe 10 minutes or so. Um, let it firm up a little bit and then I will go back in and start detailing it a little bit more, make it, start putting in the finer details. Um, but you can kind of see here just um, with this second layer of detailing that, you know, you can start to see the shape a little bit more along the top. You can start to see the ind more individual strands. Um, and then we'll go back in, I'll carve in some more, add some more depth. And then what I usually do is I'll wait probably another half hour or so after that. Um, I wait until the epoxy is actually pretty hard. Um, obviously where I can still work with it, but I have to use um, a decent amount of pressure to put little lines in. And that's generally what I will do um, to do like the really, really fine little kind of individual hair texture details at the very end. Um, but I'm gonna let this cure for a few minutes and then I will come back.